All right, today we're going to be cutting a 45 degree crown onto a 1911 barrel. This is a barrel out of a SIG RCS 1911. You can see they do give you a match grade barrel. I forgot to uh, include that in the other video, but you can see how this is probably seven thousandths or so bigger than the rest of the barrel. Indicative of a match grade barrel, true match grade barrel, not just something that says match grade on a piece of paper somewhere. But uh, we're here to discuss 45 degree muzzle crown. The SIG bushing fits flush already, it'll sit like that, but once we dish in the crown there with a 45 degree chamfer tool it'll look a lot cooler mainly the reason we're doing this uh, I don't think there's any other I'm probably gonna actually injure the accuracy of this firearm by hand cutting a, uh, a crown into it but the difference in accuracy is going to be outside of my ability so it really doesn't matter but the lathe turned 11 degree crown that's on there currently I'm sure is much finer than what I'm going to do with this hand chamfering tool. Most people would not want to take a brand new barrel that's never even been fired and mess around with it but I've done this a couple times before so I, I don't think it's going to be a problem for me. But you know you have an older older 1911 you know you know mind playing around with buy the chamfer tool do yourself a 45 degree crown and be happy you know like the way it looks when it turns out this is called a 45 degree muzzle chamfering cutter this is from Brownells you look on their website they have the steel pilot rather than the brass pilot because the steel pilot will just last a lot longer so let's get to getting here. Uh, this is just hydraulic fluid and a uh, uh, air tool. Uh, what do you call it? Can never over lube. Get some in there. Get some on your cutter tool. Slide in your pilot. And very lightly. You can always take more off. Can never stress that enough whenever you're working with precision ground pieces. If this takes me two hours, it's much better than doing it in five minutes and, and taking off too much material. Keep a brush nearby. You want to constantly brush out all of the uh, waste material. It'll cut down on the chatter marks. I'm barely pushing down on this. You just want to go nice and easy like this. And you'll feel it cutting. You don't have to push into it very hard at all. Again, you can never remove enough of this waste material. If I could do this under a faucet of oil that's filtered, that would be the ideal way to do this, but uh, if you have that kind of technology, you most likely would have a CNC machine in your garage, and you wouldn't have to mess around with doing it by hand. But this is a, I don't know, eighty, ninety dollar tool you can buy and use on as many nineteen eleven barrels as you want, and give every one of your nineteen elevens a custom look. Just keep cleaning out the flutes.
once in a while, give yourself some more oil. For oil, you can get actual cutting oil. I just have hydraulic oil in this. It's, it's all going to do the same thing. Just cut down on friction. Halfway through, if you want to pull the pilot out and clean all the little burrs out from underneath there, you can do that too. But the main thing to remember when you're doing this is to not rush. There's no reason to race when crowning a barrel. And then every time you do it, you'll get the feel for it better where you don't get any kind of chatter marks and it'll run a little bit smoother it's just pretty much all on the feel <clears throat> you know would a gunsmith probably do a better job on a lathe of course but then you don't get to say you did it yourself and this is eighty dollars once not i don't even know what a gunsmith would charge i've never paid a gunsmith to do anything on any firearm i've owned Either I'll try it myself and screw up and buy new parts, or I'll try it myself and succeed. Either way, I'd rather do it myself than have somebody else do it. But once you have the crowning tool, being that you don't you know, drop it on the ground and break a flute or something. Outside of that, this tool will last for probably ever. So you can do as many barrels as you want. After you buy the tool and the handle, that all comes as one package. It'll be, I think, 80 some dollars for this pilot and the handle. You can buy different pilots afterwards for probably, I don't know, eight, nine dollars a piece. And do as many caliber barrels as you want, but mainly, this, I mean, it's not just a 1911 thing, but it looks the coolest on a 1911 and 45 ACP. You know, I could do it on one of my Ruger Blackhawks, but nobody would really know the difference, because you can't get that same look as you do with a stainless barrel and bushing with this what appears to be monster hole in the front of it after you're done with the 45 degree crown but I don't think I'm gonna film the whole thing here I'll sit down at the bench get it about halfway give you some update footage we'll finish it all the way and then I uh, install it into the pistol. You guys can see the finished product. <clears throat> Alright, I'm back. About halfway through on this crown. Let's put this bushing on. See how you can see how that's starting to look pretty nice. A little bit more, we'll bring it right proud to the edge. Then you put the bushing on, you can put it in the f slide with the barrel mounted into the pistol, and you'll cut just a little tiny bit of this edge off where it'll just touch this bushing. You don't have to do it that way, but it looks the coolest when you do do it that way because then it'll kind of melt perfectly in. You won't have any kind of little flat spot on the face of this barrel. But you can also keep it as is right now. It still looks pretty nice. And you get a little bit of a stand-up edge to the edge of the barrel because once you cut a 45 degree all the way to the edge of the barrel, where there's no hardness to the edge 
if you do have it like exposed and nick it, it will nick. <laughs> Once again, you're not going to nick your rifling, but you'll have a nice big gouge over here somewhere where it'll be there forever. There ain't much you can do to it after that, so it's a happy medium between the two if you want to get it right to the edge and leave a little bit of a a uh, measurement, I don't know what you could call it, a tolerance in between the edge of the barrel and where the crown starts you can do so but as it sits right now it looks pretty nice I think I'm gonna go a little bit further I'm gonna go halfway in between I don't know that I'm gonna go all the way into the bushing on this one.